Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a special video forecast discussion. Uh, we're going to combine the public premium video discussions and also uh, the Fire Island and Beyond video discussion. We're going to combine all of them into one very in-depth discussion on this storm. Um, the reason why, quite frankly, that I'm doing this is that I am concerned about a multitude of factors with this storm, not just a snowfall. Uh, via the cameras on Fire Island and beyond, uh, I've been noticing significant ice building up on Long Island, New Jersey coast, and this is going to be a problem because you're going to have strong winds driving that ice along with a high tide that's going to be occurring at the height of this storm, and that, I think, is going to lead to some unique damage with this storm because you're literally having ice thrown up into the coastal plain, okay, right into the coastline. And I think that's going to be a uh, story that I don't think is being discussed very well. And again, when you have all that ice, you're also going to enhance your coastal flooding in influences. So there's a lot of factors here that have me a bit concerned here, along with the snow. So we're going to break down some of the factors here. I'm not going to try to get too technical, but I want to kind of show you all the factors that are evolving with this storm. So here we have the current temperatures. As you can see, it is pretty chilly out. Temperatures this morning range from the single digits to the mid-teens, a couple upper teens along the coast, and we have a dry air mass in place. Winds are light and variable. Now, winds are expected to come in from the east today. It's actually going to warm us up into the mid to upper 20s, possibly a few lower 30s here and there. Um, it's going to be the warmest that we've been in several days, so it's certainly... That's going to be a nice of, a, of an enjoyable factor uh, for this afternoon. But as we move on through tonight, look for those winds from to back to the northeast and to increase around 15 to 25 miles per hour. And then this storm starts to get itself organized. Our low pressure system is currently way down here. Okay, it's starting to get itself organized off the Florida coast. And notice while it's organizing, look at all this convection. It's already starting to develop here. Okay, now you have some bright banding, what's called a bright banding when you have some frozen precipitation. That's right, frozen precipitation in Florida. I could just hear some of my relatives who go down to Florida cursing about this fact. Uh, but yes, there is frozen precipitation down here in Florida, and that's causing some bright banding. But a lot of this is convective precipitation, and this is going to be a continuous factor as we move on with this forecast as we study the uh, development of this storm. And on the radar, you can see the storm developing very nicely. Again, here's your frozen precipitation, but here's your convective precipitation as well. As the storm develops, watch for this precipitation shield to solidify and expand to the west, but also keep an eye on where you start to see bands of heavier precipitation. That is going to be the hallmark of this storm as we move forward, and it's why I set up the snowfall forecast as I did. So I'll explain that in depth and kind of show you some of the examples here. So let's take a look at some satellite pictures. First of all, we have the infrared satellite picture. One of the reasons why I'm not going with a further east solution is based on what's happening here, okay? You're having convection developing, thunderstorms. Now, thunderstorms create latent heat energy. What that basically means is that heat is being expelled out as via energy. Now, with that, that heat has to go somewhere. And what typically happens is that an upper level ridge is pumped up as this heat is expelled, especially in an extratropical storm such as this. So with that being the fact, keep an eye on the mild guidance right here, okay? As the storm develops, just keep that in the back of your mind as the storm develops about what is going on and why I am going away from the European guidance, which everyone says is always great, and the NAM model guidance, uh, which I think is a little bit more of a realistic solution based on what I'm seeing here in the observations. Meanwhile, you can see, start to see our short waves start to interact. This is our Arctic cold front, which will be a key player here. And you can see on the water vapor satellite picture, our short waves starting to interact and phase. Not completely yet, but we're going to get there. And as this starts to happen, watch for uh, the cloud tops to start exploding right along the southeast coast once this starts to interact in about another two hours. So you're going to see on the satellite picture 
And we'll probably be using a lot of the uh, new GOES East satellite picture uh, on uh, Twitter and Facebook to show this. This storm just blossoming and growing and just exploding as the interaction between these short waves, the Arctic air mass, and the tropical air mass sitting here around the Bahamas all clash and interact to enhance the storm. And what you're going to see is a classic bomb develop off the East Coast. Now, this isn't anything new. It's not something that's, you know, climate change or anything of that respect. I've heard some questions about that. This is East Coast weather in the winter. You know, uh, when you have a Gulf Stream out here with very warm water and you get an Arctic air mass sitting out here, you got the potential for some rather impressive winter storms. And that is pretty much what is going to be happening in this scenario. When we step back and take a look at the whole North America uh, water vapor satellite picture, you can see the whole setup here has evolved very nicely. We have our ridge with the perfect orientation that we need to allow these short waves to dive south. You're starting to see the short waves interact. And keep an eye on this area right here for this part to start to bulge. You can already start to see it. Okay, I'm going to explain why that's really important. We also have our Arctic shortwave diving in. You can see the influence from that. Look at this uh, convergence starting to develop here. Very interesting. And you can see that Arctic shortwave diving in, and that's going to be a key factor in preventing the storm from going too far west. Okay, there's a bit of a limit here as far as how far west it can go. And also, that's going to influence what we call mesoscale banding in a significant way. You're going to hear the word deformation zone quite a bit over the next 24 hours. So let's dive into some of this model guidance. So this is the new NAM model guidance, just came out, the 12Z, okay? Now, here is what separates the two models between the Western models and the Eastern models, okay? As this storm evolves tonight, okay? See this area right here of heights building? That keeps all of this basically together. It causes the phase to lock in. And so as a result, you end up with your upper level low basically tracking off the New Jersey coast, okay, closer to the coast, okay, and that leads to the precipitation shield allowed to expand only so far, about eastern Pennsylvania as far as the light precipitation is concerned. But it basically allows for a more westward track and more expansion of the precipitation shield to the west, okay? Now, you see how this short wave dives in like this? Well, this causes stretching in the atmosphere, all right? But it also prevents the storm from only expanding so far west. So kind of consider this like a stopgap, okay? So your storm is able to blow up and uh, expand, okay? But it can't really get past this point here because you have a lot of competing wind vectors going on, basically convergence and divergence going on in the atmosphere. It kind of puts a border as far as how far this storm can expand to the west. And also it prevents it from tracking any further west uh, as we don't have a triple phase here. We just have the phase of the short waves down here. Now let me show you the European guidance, okay? So we see by this evening, again, on the NAM model guidance, you see that that development happening right over the New Jersey coastal waters now when we take a look at the European guidance look what it tries to do it produces this fictitious uh, short wave here and the reason why I say it's fictitious is that it develops via convective feedback error which you can see right here so here's your two short waves okay that are shown, let's see, this is 0Z tonight, so this is 6 hours, 12. Okay, so here's 0Z tonight. Here is the representation of the convective anomaly here that you're seeing, okay? It's, it's a bit of feedback, but not as strong, okay? And here is your two short waves. What the NAM does is keep everything together because it recognizes the fact that heights have to build. For whatever reason, I don't know, maybe the European is just having a bad week. Maybe it broke up with his girlfriend or something. I don't know. But it's not recognizing that ridge, okay? And it's trying to create a separate trough, which leads to a track further out in the Atlantic. I don't think that's going to happen, okay? Based on what I'm seeing on the water vapor satellite picture and all the observations. So that's why I went with a track closer to the coast. 
But you're probably asking, Steve, you dropped snowfall totals in portions of New Jersey. Yes, I did. I'm going to show you why. Now, remember I had mentioned about the deformation zones and, and the potential for convective snowfall. When we take a look at the model guides here, I beg you to stop looking at QPF fields alone. You have to look at what's happening with the lifting that's going on in the atmosphere. So, what do we see when we look at this radar signature? Again, don't take it verbatim, but look what we have here. We have clearly, okay, the best lifting focused on the coast. And we also have signs of convective precipitation forming throughout the region. Now, this is a perfect example right here. You see how this lifting gets really strong and then you have sinking air, and then you got lifting again and then sinking air. So here's what's happening with this storm. The entire precipitation shield is gonna be expanding out to central Pennsylvania. A lot of this is gonna be very light and it's gonna be, it'll accumulate because it's so cold out, but it's gonna be very slow to do so, okay? Meanwhile, out here, you got your moderate to heavy snow. But notice you see, and whenever you have these intense bands, you also have rapid sinking. So the question is, where does this happen the most? That is pretty much the whole forecast as you go forward. Where does this band set up between the Delaware River and Connecticut? Now, for those of you in Long Island, this storm will, you'll be in the heart of this heavier snowfall. So I have no doubt whatsoever you'll go over six inches. But the New York City metro, portions of the southern Hudson River Valley, uh, the New Jersey coast, uh, it's a little bit more dicey, a little bit more of a question because the banding is going to be over the region and then pulsing on and off, okay? So you're going to have areas where you're going to be trapped in some of those lower pulse areas. And as a result, you may only get four inches. Or you might be a town that gets the unlucky... Uh, privilege of getting of sitting under an intense band of snow like what you see here and you can end up with over eight inches of snow very easily in this event the question is where does it set up it's kind of like trying to forecast the exact position of a thunderstorm uh 24 hours out very difficult to do but that is the threat along the coast here over in northeastern new jersey and northern new jersey it gets a little bit more complicated because while the new york city metro looks like it's going to be in that area just to the east, you're going to be in an area where you're going to have a lot of sinking air. So as a result, with that being a factor, you have to lower your snowfall totals because all your strongest lifting is out here. And if you have all the strong lifting out here, you have to have sinking air to your west. And that is pretty much what I'm expecting from, uh, from basically western New Jersey on east. And so that pretty much gives us our forecast. Now you can go to uh, this link right here at NYNJPA weather latest ice and snow forecasts to get your latest map and also I have a Google map down here that you can zoom in to see so that way if you have a question about your town heck your street you can literally zoom in just click on it and you'll get your forecast right from there now with that said again for much of uh, eastern Connecticut Long Island uh, basically the eastern two-thirds of Long Island I'm looking at 6 to 12 inches. That plus is due to some mesoscale banding. Uh, there is going to be some very interesting snowfall totals from this storm in a very, very tight gradient. Again, in your uh, purple areas, I got 4 to 8 inches. That's Hartford down through uh, portions of southwestern Connecticut, the southern Hudson River Valley, New York City Metro, uh, coastal New Jersey. Okay, this area, again, is going to be in where you're going to see some banding. It's going to be on and off, and there will be some locations that will get four inches and other locations that, depending on where you set up this mesoscale banding, you could make a case for 14 inches of snow. I would not be surprised, I've seen this before, where portions of a county ranges anywhere from four to 14 inches, producing a 10-inch gradient over a county in these type of scenarios. That is what you're pretty much dealing with. Again, kind of put it in terms of what a thunderstorm is like. Some locations get nothing and other locations get two inches of rain in one county, just depending on where those thunderstorms set up. And that is essentially what we're dealing with here. Then as you go a little bit further west, you're looking at two to four inches of snow. Again, the idea here is that with this storm being such a convective uh, 
core, there's going to be a nice little sharp cutoff between where you get your heavy snows and where you get that light to moderate snowfall. And so thus, looking at that two to four inches and further to the west, a trace of two inches. This two inches is mostly due to the potential of a secondary deformation zone forming and producing a period of light snow. Um, keyword there is light, producing about one to two inches of snow possibly if it should form. Otherwise, we're looking at a trace. Look at impact times of 1 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Thursday. You'll start to see some snow showers around 11 p.m. tonight, but the brunt of this storm is during this time period. Winds are a major concern here. Let me pull up some quick data here and just kind of illustrate the point here. Take a look at this. And again, this data is from uh, Storm Vista Models, this excellent model website. All right, so take a look at this. Okay, this storm comes in. That is some major wind on Thursday afternoon, late, late Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon. You're talking about winds anywhere from 20 to 30 miles per hour over the land and over your coastal waters. You're talking about anywhere from 35 up to 60 mile per hour winds, possibly up to 65 mile per hour winds. You're talking about hurricane strength gusts out here in the Atlantic. Uh, so there is going to be some major concerns here with the winds. Do be prepared for the potential for power outages. Visibility is going to be poor. Even if you're in an area where you're getting light snow, that snow is going to get blown around with these strong winds. Uh, so that's definitely going to be a concern. And watch out for wind damage as well. And of course, there is a significant concern with coastal flooding. Again, you got that ice along the coast on Long Island and New Jersey coast. That's going to enhance the coastal flooding influences here. Uh, so definitely use some caution in that respect. The good news is that this storm is booking. So by the time we get to this evening, we're going to have winds from the northwest. And it's going to start to drive out that water. But still, watch out for the potential for some ice, creating some structural damage. Just be, uh, be prepared for that. I think it's going to be a bigger story than what people think. So definitely watch out for that. And of course, the coastal flooding is going to be a major impact, possibly a major um, along many locations on the New Jersey coast and on Long Island. So beyond this point, what else is going to happen? Well, how about an Arctic blast to start off the first full weekend of 2018? But warmer conditions are finally on the way. So we're going to see a break in this cold weather pattern. We'll run through the forecast real quickly here. For today, again, increasing clouds, temperatures rising into the upper 20s to lower 30s. For tonight, the snow starts to come in and it comes in like a gangbuster. Look for lows in the mid 20s, highs tomorrow in the mid to upper 20s. It's going to feel like the single digits though due to those strong winds. On Friday, look for sky cloud cover. A few flurries are possible, maybe even a snow squall or two with some of these short waves moving through. Look for temperatures on Friday to be in the single digits for lows and lower to mid teens for highs. So it's going to feel more like temperatures below zero with these strong winds. On Saturday, winter is still there, northwest 10 to 20 miles per hour, and still very cold. Lows in the single digits, highs in the lower to mid teens. On Sunday, that high pressure system starts to shift off the coast. Winds start to veer to the southwest. Look for lows in the single digits once again. Highs in the lower to mid 20s though as we start to warm up. On Monday, look for cloudy skies, possibly a few showers in the afternoon and evening. Lows in the lower to mid 20s, highs in the upper 30s to lower 40s. We break freezing for a high big time. And on Tuesday, cold front moves through with periods of showers. Look for temperatures to range from the lower to mid 30s for lows and lower to mid 40s for highs. So definitely this is a rain threat. Watch out for some ice though in the Hudson River Valley, maybe portions of northeastern Pennsylvania. This is warm front tries to lift through early in the morning hours. And then on Wednesday, well, we're right back into the deep freeze with temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 20s for lows and lower to mid 30s for highs with a stiff northwesterly wind at around 10 to 20 miles per hour. That is your forecast discussion for today. Thank you for following NY and JPA weather. Thank you for all my premium members out there. I really appreciate you allowing me to do this video. Usually it's in the premium section, uh, but I thought it was important to get all this information out there. Thank you again, and as always, stay safe out there.